Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I'm going to do a little bit something different. I have never done a step-by-step -step troubleshooting video with you guys and there's usually a good reason for that because I kind of like to know what I'm getting into before I start recording because sometimes when you're troubleshooting something it can take hours, literally hours. But this right here, I don't know, this feels a little special. This is a it's an air compressor basically, but it's used in a patient environment. So it's got things like extra filtration and it's got a lot of noise deadening inside it. I know that for a fact, even though I myself have never opened one of these up. So this guy here has a problem. When you go to power it on, it pops the fuse. And it's got, uh, as far as I know, two 5 amp fuses inside it. But it pops the fuse every single time. And according to the ratings, it says that it can do uh, 4.3 to 5.3 amps. Well, at 5.3 amps, if there's a 5 amp fuse loaded in it, yes, it can explode that fuse. But I don't think that that's the whole story. Now, more than likely, what I'm assuming, since this guy looks like it's rather old, is that the compressor pump inside it is probably gummed up. This probably just happened. And I doubt that this thing is used absolutely every single day. So that means that without a fair amount of usage, the pump is going to get gummy. A lot of petroleum-based lubricants get gummy over time. And that is going to make the pump work harder. And the compressor, when it has to work harder, is going to pull more amperage. And that is what's going to pop your fuse. Now, I don't know for sure, but that is probably what's going on in this. Because most air compressors, you have a motor you have a uh, regulator which is usually just a uh, analog switch it's a pressure activated switch and there's normally a calibration screw so you can tell it when you want it to shut off and there's another pressure activated switch that tells you wh when to start the pressure cycle so it will charge all the way up to let's say 120 psi and then it'll hit one pressure switch and then it will shut off and then as you discharge the air that's stored inside it, when it gets down to say 80 PSI, that's when it will activate the second switch and it will kick in the compressor again and it will charge it back up to 120 PSI. Now I don't know if that's the exact pressures that this thing is set for, but that is very typical for air compressors. There's almost never a computer inside them. They're very analog devices. They're very stupid. And because of that, they're perfect for troubleshooting. Now this exact device right here I found in the trash. It was set to go to the warehouse for disposal and since it doesn't work it's not really worth very much and they were going to throw it away anyway. So I figured what the hell guys let's go ahead and let's tear this bad boy apart. I'm going to do a step-by-step -step, unedited run for my troubleshooting you know so you guys can see how I do business because that's, that's something that you have to learn is the troubleshooting process, okay? Now, every single step is calculated and I usually don't flap at the breeze. I mean, my years of doing that is a long way off, okay? But this will help you guys in figuring out how to go about your own troubleshooting process is how I do mine. So normally you will watch a senior technician and you kind of follow them around and you sit there and you learn how they do their troubleshooting process and that is the hardest thing to achieve in modern day healthcare right the days of us having an assistant or a biomed one or a biomed associate just follow you around and learn stuff those days are pretty much almost gone nowadays they want to get you out there they want you to get you closing work orders as fast as possible and many many times that neglects the education and the advancement, the professional advancement of a technician. You can hinder somebody professionally for their entire career if you don't get them on the right foot. So guys, this is me troubleshooting an air compressor so that you guys can see what's going on. Now this thing has already been thrown away, so somebody had already deemed it not worth repairing, but I doubt they got to the real juicy parts of it because as I told you, there's nothing major inside this guy. It's very easy to troubleshoot. Let's take a look and let's start it right out. Now it's got a plastic case and I can see that there was some perimeter screws around the front and it looks like the handles right here and right here are holding it on. 
So the first step to troubleshooting is figuring out what's going to hold this guy together. And I can see right here, uh, the perimeter screws are out. It's got a little collar right here that holds the regulator. So I'm going to, I'm going to spin that collar nut off. Now this guy here, I have tried plugging it in and I have tried changing out the fuses and uh, I got nothing. I got absolutely nothing. It didn't even pop the existing fuses that I put in there. So I got no power up. It didn't do nothing. I'm assuming that the other technician that had his hands in there disconnected some stuff and just left it for the trash. Okay. The worst thing that you can ever do as a biomed is go in after another technician has already had his hands inside a device because you never know what that guy did or did not do. So let's take a look guys. I have my Allen's and I have no idea if this can be standard metric. All right, it's metric, you dig it. So I'm just gonna pull these two side handles off and I'm gonna try and lay out all the parts over here so that we can keep track of everything. Now there are spacers on these so I'm trying to keep everything together. When I pull stuff apart, I try and keep everything together as much as possible. Do not just lay your parts willy-nilly all over the place, okay? So you're going to see, I'm going to start laying out all my fasteners in sequence right over here. Flat spacing things, when you put something down and you just, you know, kind of let it go, that's the worst, worst habit for biomeds, is people that flat space stuff. I'm guilty of it too, guys. I'm guilty of it too, all right? And I, no, I can't see these fasteners. <laughs> the camera can see it over there, but I can't. There we go. All right, all right. That's my two fasteners. Oh, look at that. Okay. So maybe I didn't have to remove that regulator nut after all. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it back on just because I don't like surprises. Alright, so I have an airline that goes to the front and a Molex connector. Ah uh, so let's take a look at this guy. Um I'm gonna disconnect this Molex connector so I can pull the hood off. Come on. There we go, there we go. All right, and the pneumatic lines right here, they go to the gauge sets in the front. So we just push down on this and pull on the hose. And of course it would still have air pressure in it. It just goes to show you there are lots of hazards that you have to take into account when you're working on hydraulic systems and pneumatic systems. Ooh, look at this, that's dirty. Yeah, this guy probably hasn't had a proper PM in a long time. <clears throat> so we can see the compressed air reservoir here. Uh, I have a fan and let's see, it looks like I have a muffler. I have a thermal sensor. Okay, this is looking a little better. So I have a uh, thermal protection. I've got a tie-in bar. So if you need to check and see if your uh, your mains and your fuses are good. You can actually check that from right here on AC because this is this is all going to be AC, guys. Like I said, it's all analog as far as I can tell. Yep, looks like it's all analog. So right here is the uh, safety relief valve. You can see I'm pulling on it. I if I would have been able to get in there, I probably would have pulled that first. Oh boy. Okay. Well, there's a little bit of hint. So what I have here is it looks like there used to be a line that came up here and it is splashing straight right here on my motor run capacitor. Here, let me tilt it up so that you all can see. See, I've got some splash debris right here on the capacitor. And capacitors are one of those things that just naturally go bad. So if it's uh, throwing out liquid and debris on this capacitor. How much you want to bet that capacitor is the only thing that's wrong? So this capacitor right here is already suspect. I also have to be careful of it because it it does say 30 microfarad but it says 370 volts and I bet you it's running at line voltage. 
So it's probably 120 volts stored. It does have a date on it of 2016. How much do you want to bet that little bad boy right there is bad? It's just the way it is. Power supplies and capacitors go bad. So right here I've got my, uh, this is a cooler. So it's a pre-cooler for the air compressor right here. So uh, as the compressor pumps the air, it comes up into here and this is like an intercooler. It chills the air down just enough so that it can safely go down here and uh, store in the little cylinder. And let's see, what else do I have here? This looks like a water trap, this guy right here. It's got a flow arrow, you can see around the top. I have, this is a timer. And this guy right here, oh yeah, I gotta spin it so I can see it. It says Condor MDR 21-EA. So this is your power switch off auto. But I guarantee that this guy also, since it's got the pneumatics that come in there, has those switches that I was talking about that it's got the, um, the pressure, uh, the high limit pressure and the start pressure. Okay, so it'll run up to the, the high pressure and then it will back down to the start the start pressure so it'll be like 120 psi and then it'll go down to 80 psi to which then it will kick the compressor in again and start it so it's all analog and it's probably all up underneath this guy here this guy here looks like a purge valve it looks like a purge valve now, I'm not too specific on it there's two of them there's one here and there's one here fixed on timer and what does this guy do no idea this one says fixed on time and this one here says single shot so I mean they're obviously just timers and they just I don't know let's see it goes from the tank up to here oh, okay so this guy here is probably a purge timer so it blasts the uh, condensation out of the line out of the circuit so this guy here periodically will blast which is why I've got all the splash damage right here on this capacitor so yep it opens this guy periodically comes out this little port right here splashes down on my capacitor lovely that they chose to do that alright so Looks like the compressor is located under here. So we'll take a look and see what type of compressor we got in here, huh? Uh, what do we have on this side? We got my tie-ins. Tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this guy in. Is there anything I need to know on the front? Okay, on the front, I've got my hours meter. I've got a uh, some condition LEDs, critical condition, and a running. LED nothing too major doesn't matter I uh, honestly don't expect this guy to start up anyway <clears throat> I'm kind of hoping to hear a motor buzzing though because that would be an indicator that the capacitor is going bad oh let's see I guess let's check to see if I have fuses do I have fuses I do have fuses okay so those are good so let's take a look at what's next. Let's, let's get a power cord, shut the power off, and set my meter to voltage, AC. Okay, we're good. Let me get a power cord. I need a fancy power cord. All right, here we go. Now everything is live. So I'm going to go right up here to this bus bar that I was talking about. And that would be the blue and the brown. Right there and right there. Okay. Notice how uh, I'm doing it one handed on the bus bar. And then I'm going to energize the circuit. So I have absolutely nothing for
from here. Okay, power's off. I've got nothing. All right. Let's take a look. What do we got? So I've got two different fuses in there. And let's see if one of my fuses is going to be the problem. checking to make sure that everything is connected because like I said another technician had his hands in here before I did and you never know what you're gonna get man all right let's see get this guy get this guy axial fuses and they will do for what I'm doing here because if they pop they pop let's check and make sure that my fuses are good because it did show no voltage okay that one's good that one's good let's pop them in and see what's going on off plugged in holy cow we have a compressor what is going on so this fuse right here is in question Ooh. well that's interesting hold on let me get a better bite on it Okay, that fuse is good. Well, you've seen it, guys. The compressor wants to kick on immediately. Let's see how good it does. Hold on, just one second. Okay. So I did the purge. It runs for a certain period of time, then it closes the valve, and it kicks out all the moisture, and now it's going straight right here to the front pressure gauge, and it's not going to build very much pressure while it's, uh, while it's wide open. So it's passed all the tests up to this moment. I guess the next thing to do would be to take that top, Bring it on over here and let's take a look. Let's see what we can make it do. My tools over the side. So as you guys know, the higher the air pressure builds up inside this unit, the more amperage it's probably going to draw. And that's when we're really going to test that, that pump motor. Right now we haven't done very much. You know, we just basically read it, let it run free open. Okay, here we go. We got it. We got it. Now we're going to go ahead and let this guy charge up until it gets the shutoff pressure. And then when it reaches the shutoff pressure, well, that's as high as it's going to go. So then if it doesn't pop the fuse, I guess we might call it just a bad fuse. Okay, so it's running the purge. It's flashing out any condensation shuts it off and now it's building real pressure see that so we're gonna go ahead and let this bad boy build right up then we're gonna see what we got listen to how quiet this guy is I dig that listen to that so here's your intercooler it's got the fan that's blowing right over it so it cools down the compressed air 
that's going into the cylinder. Now, cold compressed air does not want to uh, carry condensation, so that's going to help separate out the condensation. All right, let's see, what pressure did it get to? Oh man, I'm at 120 PSI. Guys, I think we solved the problem. All right, I'm gonna drain some pressure out. And I'm gonna do that with this Allen right here, so. It's gonna get down to the cutoff pressure, and I call it the start pressure, and that's when it's gonna kick it back in. There it goes. So it goes into another slight purge, and then it kicks on the, the compressor again. And this is all running beautifully. Like I said, guys, compressors are not that complex of devices. So I'm gonna go ahead and drain it down again. Wow, it's cycling flawlessly, guys. And to be honest, it doesn't look like this device is all that old. I mean, it's obviously old, but it, look at it. The foam is nice and neat. It's not dirty on the intercooler like you would expect it to be. This, is, this device is actually really good condition. That's why I do not want it to go into the trash. There we go. There we go. And the muffler, everything keeps it nice and quiet. Once I put this hood on, it's going to be even quieter still. That's beautiful. Okay, let me shut the AC power off so I can fit the hood back on properly. And then uh, I guess I'm just going to let it run for a couple hours and see how it does. I'm very surprised. This is a $3,200 or $3,500 air compressor. And the fact that the other technician was just willing to throw it in the trash because it just wasn't working right, that's so aggravating to me, guys, because it's not that difficult of a device, all right? It's not that complex. And to see a senior technician do that, it's, it's very disheartening because it obviously works just fine. It took me, if I wasn't explaining this, that would have probably taken me about five to 10 minutes to solve this problem. Anyway, guys, here, let me go ahead and put uh, the cover on securely and let's start it up and see what it sounds like. Man, I don't know if you guys can hear that. You can obviously hear me talking, so it's not that loud. That's just that uh, intercooler fan right there. All right, let's go ahead and drain some pressure off it and let's see how loud it, it really is. Have you guys ever heard of an air compressor that quiet? That's absolutely amazing. Listen to this guy. I think it, it's going up, 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 up. Eight bar, it shuts off. That's about, what, 115 PSI? And it's so flawless. I love it, guys. So, um, before I put this guy back in service, I'm going to go ahead and it's going to get used quite a bit. I'm probably going to hook it up to an air tool and I'm going to give it a hot supper. And if it passes that and it doesn't pop these 5 amp slow blow fuses, it had fast blows on there. And I put slow blows on there because you're going to get some surge from the compressor itself running. So having the correct type of fuse in your device, it's not about the amperage necessarily, it's about the type of fuse. And slow blows are designed to not pop right away. So since this guy has a 5.3 amp rating and there's a five amp fuse in there, of course it's gonna pop if it's a, a fast blow fuse. You put a slow blow fuse in there and it gives you a little bit of leeway for the surge because that's what the ratings for it's for the surge when that when that guy kicks on and it sucks a lot of current to get it up and get going hey guys this thing 
is working absolutely fine. I don't know what to say. I'm going to put it back together the rest of the way, and this guy is going back into service. Thanks again for watching.